At last, Casey's mod has officially been released, and with it, the remaining 8 entry logs. I've already made part 1 of this video going over logs 1 through 4, and so this one has been made assuming you've already watched it, or at least know the context of those first few logs. As I did last time, I'll be reading over all the entries first, and then explaining what they really mean. So, if you're not interested in the exact wording and just want to get the lore behind them, skip ahead to the timestamp above. Let's get started. Entry 5. I'm addicted to Leshy's inscription. It's far from perfect though, some really unbalanced shit in here to be honest. I have my Ouroboros up to over a hundred thanks to the stupidly broken fecundity sigil combo. I decided that I'm going to work on making this balanced, and maybe a bit of an actual challenge. I'm making a mod. I wonder what Leshy will think. Entry 6. Work on the mod continues. I was appalled to find that Leshy chose to use the Casey Hobbs ghoul skull as a trinket on his shelf. He fills it with teeth for the trapper after every boss. Kinda lame because it's tedious to keep getting up from the table just to collect the teeth. I'll have to hack that out. He'll hate me for it. Entry 7. Some nights I mod, some nights I dig. I dig deeper into this log file, and find things I sometimes wish I hadn't. This isn't just some disc Kaminsky used to vent his workplace frustrations. This is some real shit. Every once in a while I get some context from the woodcarver, and it's chilling. This could all be bunk, or there could be a doomsday machine under Berlin, armed by a code hidden in a pack of cards. In other news, I just finished implementing the boss totems challenge. Entry 8. I barely leave the apartment, save for the odd dinner out with mom, but last night was an exception. I went to Comics Land to play a Secrets of Legendaria draft. Is it weird that I brought the disc with me? I feel uncomfortable being apart from it. I ended up ripping a foil sweaty dragon, but lost the first match to this weird dude who wanted to record it for his YouTube channel. Like, he actually brought a camcorder on a chalky looking tripod to the shop. How is that allowed? Entry 9. Today I found out what happened to PO3. Let you turn the scribe of technology into a stoic card. I found the card on the shelf below the safe and laughed right out loud when it told me it was PO3 and needed help. I handed it over to Leshy who was less amused. I guess this is the fate that the other scribes met, though I haven't seen them yet. Entry 10. Last night, I brought the disc with me on a walk around the seawall and was this close to just chucking it into the water. If I'm right, the Carnawful code is still out there and the machine is, incredibly, still ready to accept it. Destroy the disc, no one finds the code, and no one can blow up half of Europe, right? But I saw an otter, which made me think of Leshy. Maybe we need the code to disarm the machine. Could this be right? I can't be sure. I went home. Entry 11. No one will ever play this mod, and the way things are looking, they might never even play the game. But I'm gonna indulge in a fantasy. Thousands of players play it and love it. They each find different reasons to love it, and even love its imperfections. They make music and art about it that makes me see my own work in a different way. But even a simple comment can have this effect. It makes me feel like all my work mattered, and then some. I'm overflowing with gratitude. Well, time to finish up the squirrel fish challenge. Maybe I'll hit up comics land later. Entry 12. Call from Mr. Kaminsky at 9.45pm. What the hell is wrong with this guy? He wants all the sample discs back at the factory now. What does he know? Nah, tick mass, he kept saying. I'm done with all this, but I can't bring myself to destroy the disc. I'm sorry. I've got a little wooden box and I'm going to bury it with the disc inside. I'm writing the chords down, and who knows, maybe I'll burn them later. Unless she will thank me, the world may not. Goodbye for now. And that's all of them. Now for the explanations. Entry 5 continues where the first four left off. Casey has been playing Leshy's game, a game that was never programmed by anyone, although she's been thoroughly enjoying it. The fecundity sigil combo she references is a cycle players can exploit during the game, killing and resummoning the Ouroboros card an infinite number of times, 
growing stronger with each death. Then she says how she's going to make a mod out of Leshy's game, aptly named Casey's Mod, the very one we're playing right now. Log 6 just references a skull that appears on one of Leshy's tables, which, as explained, has some golden teeth you can pull out to trade with the trapper. Although, Casey's a bit disturbed by the fact that Leshy used the skull of the ghoul sharing her name, so she took it out of the mod. We also see that at this point, she's fully acknowledged Leshy and the other scribes as conscient, admitting Leshy will hate some of the changes she puts in her mod. Log 7 is where things get interesting. At first, Casey just talks about looking through some of Kaminsky's files, the one who sent the old data down to Game Funa. But, as she digs into the code, she finds that this kind of awful code the old data has something to do with may hide the code to a doomsday device hidden under Berlin. Oh, but she also added the boss totem challenge to a mod, so clearly not a big deal. Entry 8 is mostly negligible, but gives us a bit of insight into Casey's life. It talks about her introverted lifestyle, only really leaving the house to do things with her mum. The log also gives a fun reference to the Lucky Carter, the guy we follow during the main game events of Inscription. She randomly runs into him at a draft tournament, and promptly gets trounced. One thing to note is that she brought the Inscription disc with her to the convention, the one containing the old data, going as far as to say that she feels uncomfortable whenever she's apart from it. The old data's evil tendrils have already started influencing her mind. Entry 9 really is just extraneous, although somewhat interesting info. Casey finds PO3 in his card form and has a good laugh about it, even after he asks her for help. Leshy was not so pleased, as what PO3 and the rest of the scribes want help to do is overthrow Leshy, as we do in the main game. In 10, we can quite clearly see the effect the old data has had on Casey. As would be expected of someone who's come across a disc holding the code to a doomsday device, she wants oh so desperately to throw the disc into the sea, to destroy any chance of somebody learning the code hidden on the old data. But she can't. Against all logic, she decides not to, distracting herself with the illogical reasons to keep the disc with her. The old data has permeated her subconsciousness and saved itself. While still technically written by Casey, Entry 11 is much more of a letter from Daniel Mullins to us, the player. Due to the work and dedication he's put in for the past few years, he is living the fantasy that Casey describes. Thousands of people around the world are playing and enjoying the games he put his heart and soul into. And as a creator, nothing could be more important than that. He is truly grateful for the opportunity this community has given him and wants everybody to know how thankful he is. Anyway, back to the Doomsday device. Mr. Kaminsky has caught on to the fact that the disk containing the old data has gone missing, and demands that all the disks get resent to the factory for inspection. But after the things Casey's seen on the disk, she doesn't trust him. She can't trust anyone with such a powerful evil. Casey doesn't return the disk, but she does acknowledge something must be done. Despite the obvious solution, she can't bring herself to destroy the disc. Her compassion for Leshy and the other scribes, plus the influence of the old data on her mind stops her. Despite the consequences it may hold for the world, she hides it in a small box hidden underground in the middle of a forest, only writing down the coordinates on a deck of cards for safekeeping. As we know from the main game, Casey is eventually found by her employer, Game Funa and is killed for what she knows about the old data. Although they never do find the disc, that award goes to Luke, who buys the pack of cards off of Casey's mom at a garage sale. Although, he too does not get to live long after learning of the old data. Game Funa is quite invested in keeping it a secret. And that's all the journal entries. Thank you to Daniel Mullins for making such an amazing game, and thank you for watching.